How's it going, everybody? Rybrad here today, and we are back with our Philadelphia Flyers franchise mode here today in episode number six, ready to get season number two underway. And I do appreciate the comments on the last one, guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and touch on the AHL team because that's kind of important for the future of this franchise. Our first round pick in the draft last season was was quite good. Uh, two first rounders and things went really, really well. But here we go, guys. We are ready to jump into this one. And I am going to agree with you um, in the comments section. Now, Tate uh, Anderson mentioned that Haltonen is being drafted by everybody. And I mean, I can see why. Um, I'm not going to specifically ban him because I haven't, you know, I haven't watched a ton of uh, franchise modes this year. And, um, you know, I'm not going to just not draft the guy because he's, he's good, right? He's 69 overall. He's he's not. I don't know if he's quite ready to play in the AHL. Um, RJ Ramjan believes that he is. Um, his X-Factor development could be quick. He's medium elite. Um, he Where did he play last season? He played in Liga. So he could play in the AHL if I signed him. And he could go right on the first line wing. Uh, and get us the plus one with with uh, Bill Lehman here. Bill Lehman is definitely going to play in the AHL. He's a 77. He's listed as NHL ready already. Uh, and RJ agrees with me there. I've got the comments pulled up down beside me. Um, but we are definitely going to give these guys both their ELCs. And they're going to sign it immediately. So there's no more waiting. Halton in. Offer him a contract. There we go. And he's going to join the team as well. So they are both in Lehigh. Um, I believe they should be anyway, unless Haltonen is um, going back to Liga. I think I could, I can play him here, uh, but we are going to scratch Patrick Brown, I think. Patrick Brown, do you, he kind of fits everywhere. Uh, Zade Wisdom, probably not a guy that I want to scratch. Is there anybody else? There's Elliot Desnoyer. Uh, he doesn't look too bad, to be honest. Ratcliffe, Case, yeah, a Case. What what kind of player is Case? Because I, I may or may not scratch him. He's a playmaker. I'm going to leave him there. So Patrick Brown is the guy. We'll put Halton in. in. There we go. Uh, and then Connor Marodi, probably. Uh, actually, Nicholas Delorier. I, I know he's 32. He's a 76. He's a grinder. We may leave him there, actually. Uh, actually, no. Should we call him up? We I think we've got better players scratched. Uh, McEwen and Noah Cates are both scratched, who I'm fine with. Delorier can stay down in the minors. Uh, but as far as other guys we would like to scratch, we got a pretty young squad here, not going to lie. Lezinski's medium bottom six, and Cooper Marodi is medium bottom six. He's a two-way forward. Lezinski is a two-way forward. I'm going to scratch Cooper Marodi just because I like the mustache of Lezinski uh, better. But there we go. We're going to go ahead and move Bill Lehman up. And then Haltonen is going to up, up, up. And we quite don't quite get a, a plus. A plus. Oh, we get the power forward. Oh, we can't get the power forward. Brooks. No running. No. Oh, come on. Let's get somebody, anybody up there that gets us a plus one or a plus anything. Um, that's a bit upsetting. Wisdom doesn't. Uh, but I would like actually like to see if Wisdom could get us. Um, oh, I don't want to put Delorier there. Wisdom's a 75, though. Wisdom playing with Lehman and Casper Halton in. Um, they're both pretty solid as far as where they fit though. They both kind of fit on the first line. The first line in the AHL is not that great, uh, as far as strategies are concerned. So we'll take a look uh, at it. The strategies line one is overload with a carry cycle efficiency. Don't block. Is, is that it? Um, uh, it is balance, 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 balanced. So we need balance energy, balance, balance, energy block or balance shoot energy block. Uh, and then balance, shoot, energy, balance. So balance, shoot, energy, block for the AHL head coach. We could go ahead and find ourselves a new AHL head coach right now. Coaching staff. Uh, balance, it's it's like balance, shoot, energy, block, I think it was. Balance, shoot, energy, block. Um, AHL head coach. Uh, Marlowe here looks pretty good. Does he fit the scheme, though? Overload, carry cycle, uh, balance, shoot, balance, block. That would work. Balance, shoot, balance, block. Balance, shoot, balance, balance would work. Um, we need balance, not efficient. Balance, 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 balanced. Uh, we, but we would want to find out um, their, uh, do they like overload? Because I think our current coach is overload. I can't remember uh, if they are, um, oops, uh, if they are, do they, they don't like whatever the first line is. Okay, so the first line, edit the strategies, is overload. So we need a behind the net coach. That does balance, balance, energy block, or balance, shoot, energy block. Okay. Uh, we can definitely, I think we might be able to get a plus five up there. Um, so we go ahead and coaching staff, balance, shoot, energy block, balance, balance, energy block with behind the net. Uh, AHL head coach. 
Uh, this, that's right. Nick Marlowe's not the guy. Balance shoot, balance block with behind the net. That's, this is the guy right here. Um, carry shoot. No, we want balanced. We want balance shoot. It's, in my opinion, it's Gaspard Reve. Uh, balance shoot, balance shoot, hold the line and shoot. Overload, balance cycle, energy block. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hire Reve. He's good with defensemen. I wonder if I can find another C. He's got A minus teaching though, right? So, a minus teaching is not bad at all. Can we find somebody else that's similar with it's balance shoot, balance, balance? With this is just a bunch of balance, but that's overload. Uh, we need behind the net. That's efficient. We know uh, carry shoot efficient balance. No, uh, and that's the last AHL head coach. Okay, so Reve, we will offer Reve uh, just a bunch of money to come be our AHL head coach. We'll give him like eight hundred thousand because why not? Um, there we go. Just throw a ton of money at him. We'll go to our coaches and fire our AHL head coach. Uh, looks like we need an AHL assistant coach as well. So Grog, uh, we're going to demote him to an AHL assistant coach. Um, actually, and then we're going to, nope, we're not going to assign him to um, head coach. Oh, can I promote him to interim head coach? Uh, no, I can't promote these guys to interim head coach. That's great. So hopefully we'll be able to demote a player when Reve does um, join. Going, but the role is already filled. Ugh, are you kidding me? Uh, and then here's another wrist line in one. So EA, how do I? Let me promote him to the interim AHL head coach. Come on. Um, and it won't let me advance without an AHL head coach, which makes absolutely no sense. Um, AHL assistant coach. And then you currently please fill the following slots. I do. Can I just fire him? Do I have to fire Krog? Fire him, and then can I promote to an interim? Um, no. Okay. I need to have an... How do I... Pro... I can't... I can't hire him if I can't advance a day. How the hell am I supposed to... I can't hire him. I literally can't hire him. That... Yeah, what the hell is this? Currently do not have the amount of coaching spots filled on your team. Fill the following slots. Oh, my God. All right. So, Luo Mala is going to be the head coach. Sure, Luo Mala is actually behind the net. Balance, shoot, balance, balanced. This might be the coach. Ba behind the net, balance, shoot, balance, balanced. I like balance, balanced on the defensive pairings a lot. Um, 63%, it's a balanced coach. B minus teaching is not good. Um, but I don't know, can I like promote, demote? Um, and I wonder if now that I have a full staff, we need an AHL assistant coach and an associate coach. Um, how many coaches, do we have any good teaching coaches? Um, anybody here good at teaching? Teaching A. Oh, uh, but that's a goalie. Uh, we'll go with the forwards though, Desjardins. Uh, Desjardins, excuse me, and we'll give him a bunch of money. Offer the contract for the associate coach and then AHL assistant coach. Uh, it's still sorted by teaching and they're all goalie coaches. Um, do, we have a generalist here who's good at teaching, things we love to see. Um, give them money. And then we should be able to, I think, um, check out our lines and be good to go with all the coaches. And I, I think we'll be happy. I think we'll be happy with how things are looking in the AHL. Um, edit the lines real quick. And we only get a plus one, really? Oh, wow, I thought we'd get a much higher plus than that. Um, we, I think we're gonna get a plus one no matter who we have up on this first line, as long as it's not Nicholas Delorier. Um, But if we move Halton in off, it doesn't change a thing. We would get a plus one down there, but uh, and then Lehman out, uh, we just get a plus one everywhere. So we are getting a plus one there, and on the defensive side of things, um, there's nobody that's, like, upset with it, um, but I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, everything we do is going to be just kind of a moot point. Uh, but as far as players to call up, I think the one that makes sense is Connaughton, Kevin Connaughton. I guess I could go um, to free agency and just sign a seventh defenseman. I think that's what I want to do because Connaughton was not good last year. Um, so as far as like a defenseman, a UFA, a uh, defenseman, sort by overall, 79, uh, Ference, a UFA. Wow, 79, really? David Ference, interesting player here. Um, Ole Yolevi, too, medium top four at 25. I'll go with Ole Yolevi, why not? Take a shot on him. He looks like an average player. Does he fit the scheme at, at all, though? We have no idea. Um, that's cool. We have no idea if any of these guys fit the scheme or not. So we'll just go with Ole Yolevi. Offer him a contract of three years, a two-way deal. Bang. All right, he's considering his options, but he's probably not going to get a much better option than that. 
We'll advance the day. Uh, oh yeah, that, that was me. I did that. I did do that. I did fire our, our coach. Deja, yep. Beautiful. We got the one coach. We got both coaches. Things we love to see. Um, Ryan Ellis for Tomash Hurdle. This is an interesting trade because, I mean, I could consider it. Tomash Hurdle here is 81, but he's a first line forward. Oh, he's unhappy. He is very much unhappy because there's no way that those stats are in 81. Now, is it worth paying for him? He's ro his role is a first line forward with X factors. However, he's making eight million for the next seven years at 29. He's a great passer of the puck, but I think I'm going to pass on this trade. I like Ryan Ellis too much. Ryan Ellis, I mean, two million less for three fewer years. Yes, he's they're already 32. He might start declining soon. They didn't call me with this trade, but Ryan Ellis is a fantastic defenseman. But if there's anywhere on the team where we have a little bit of, of depth, it, it's defenseman, right? Uh, we have 386 plus. We've got Travis Sanheim, York, and Ristolainen. We don't really have any depth in the system. Um, and then as far as forwards are concerned, getting somebody like Tomash Hurdle, maybe in the mid 80s, would be nice. I don't know who I might scratch. Probably a guy like Allison I'd scratch. Um, taking a look at the lines right now, I'm pretty sure we have like a Chirier, Faraby, Druen. Uh, it's like Frost, Konechny, Atkinson, or it's Tippett. And, and then Hayes, Atkinson, Boyd, Paling, Brink, uh, Allison, I believe is, is where we're looking right now. Um, I think if we did acquire, that would give us a second line center, but the problem is then we've got him and Hayes on massive contracts. I mean, Hayes has only got three more years. I don't know if I want to do this deal. I don't think I would want to do this deal. Um, I don't think Ryan Ellis, I mean, hell, if he ever plays again, that is, you know, we have no idea if he's going to play in real life. Obviously, we're in the universe where he is going to play. But if I go to cap friendly real quick, taking a look at the San Jose Sharks, San Jose's Tomas Hurdle's got a no move clause. Um, I don't remember San Jose's. They were in the playoffs last year. I don't know if he would move it to come here. So, um, I, I don't think he wants to leave San Jose for Philadelphia unless we were an absolute stud contender. I think he, I don't think he would want to want to leave. So I think we're going to leave that trade that that was a very interesting trade though. I did appreciate that. And there is no, no, uh, clauses on Ryan Ellis's contract either. So we could have moved him if we wanted to. Um, but I would, uh, imagine hurdle would veto the trade, but I think that's what we got for the lines down in the AHL and the coaches in the AHL. Uh, and I think it's going to be pretty good. I like the fact that we get a plus one on the second line. I don't like the fact that, um, you know, we're not getting quite enough. He's high bottom six uh, to just 21, though. We could see him grow pretty nicely. But uh, Lehman here should be able to put up a good amount of points. And then Casper uh, Halton in playing with him. I'd like to see his wrist shot accuracy as a sniper go up. I mean, he is only a 69 overall. Uh, he doesn't look that good, but he could put in a bunch of points with all those X factor abilities. So I, I do think we're going to let him. Um, sit there and, and grow in the AHL. And I think we are ready to uh, jump in to the start of the season. We'll see if Ole Olivi wants to sign his contract or not. There we go. He's in Lehigh now. Uh, we want to call him up and put him on the bench. Um, I think I do kind of want to maybe up the the, the injury slider because I, I bumped it down quite a bit to, I believe, uh, 20. And I feel like I'll go up to 25 because it felt like we never saw injuries once I turned the slider down to 20. It just They just didn't happen, and I think the only time they would happen is serious, serious injuries. So I think roster moves-wise, we'll call up Yolivi just in case we do get those injuries. Um, there we go. Call him up. Ratcliffe? Ratcliffe? Uh, he's, a, he's a power forward playing with a two-way forward. I don't know. I feel like uh, maybe uh, him over Wisdom in the AHL? I have no idea. Because, uh, like... Uh, Zade Wisdom is a two-way forward. We got two two-way forwards and a sniper. I feel like Ratcliffe, the left-wing power forward, uh, would be the better idea there. Uh, Ronning is the sniper that I was going to have play on this top line. We still get a plus one with him, but he does not fit the second line very well. Uh, Brooks is really not good for the second line, and neither is Wisdom. I wonder if we can get Cates up to save us from the minus one. Uh, Forrester is, Forrester's only 21. There we go. And then Wisdom can go there on the third line. Lezinski and then, uh, actually we'll play Cates because he's a little bit younger. Kasha doesn't fit anywhere, but the first line, wow. Elliot really fits the first line. We still only get a plus one with him, which is a little bit upsetting, but it, it is what it is. We don't really have many, uh, options to get a plus here, but Andre here, he's medium top six. We could see him grow into something decent. 
Uh, and then obviously in goal, we've got Sandstrom and Arison. So uh, things are going well for the AHL squad. I hope they put up a lot of points. It looks like a pretty solid squad, all things considered. Um, hopefully they are able to go far with the new coach. And then obviously the NHL lines, we're going to try Tippett and Frost on the second, putting Hayes and Atkinson to help out the rookie Bobby Brink. Um, at 22 years old, really, really good goal scorer. Pretty excited to see what he could do. Uh, maybe instead of Wade Allison, we want Noah Cates playing. He's medium bottom six, but 24. Wade Allison is 25, so we'll just quick sub in Cates. Uh, Cates does fit more lines. He fits the third line really, really well. Uh, but we're uh, we're really not at the spot where I think we're ready to get a coach uh, to to really maximize our talent. Like we we did that with Drew in. I think Sean Couturier, we do need to find probably a carry cycle balance balanced. Uh, carry cycle balance balanced, uh, whereas Drew in is carry shoot balance balanced. Oh, we need we oh we need carry shoot balance balanced, I think. Um, but Farabee likes cycle. Konechny is a shoot type kind of player, so I believe Tippett is a shoot as well. So the second line works pretty well. Morgan Frost. Oh, wow. Oh, Couturier would get us a plus three there. So whatever's going on with the second line is much better for him. Um, although, no, it's not. I, I have no idea. It's probably the X factors that are causing that. But we are going to go ahead and rock these lines in the season and get ready to get it underway. Yoel Levy is here. We're ready to go. We've got two backup forwards, one backup defenseman. Maybe I should have two backup defensemen, one backup forward. Uh, but we'll figure it out. Hopefully we don't have that many injuries. But we'll go through the first month and just see where we're at. Check on the AHL team. Uh, they want wrist alignment again. Teams are calling, my phone's blowing up for Ristolainen. Cam York is fine. Um, he's, he's fully healthy. In the preseason, you don't have any long-term injuries. All right, players on waivers, we're good to go there. Um, and a pretty solid um, pretty solid preseason. And we start the season 0-1, but I do need to edit the scout, so I will take just a couple seconds and go do that. Scouting is fully assigned, and we can now continue the regular season. After our 4-1 loss to the Carolina Hurricanes, which is an in-division loss, which sucks, uh, we now have a home date against the Minnesota Wild, which we win 2-1, and we followed up with two more losses, getting a point out of one of them. Uh, against St. Louis, we win. So if we were just in the Central Division, um, we would probably be pretty good. But Bobby Brink is unfortunately out with a hip injury, so we need to bring in... Allison, and we'll move Paling up, I think, for now. Uh, one thing I didn't check was the power play. Uh, we got Ellis over there. I don't necessarily love Ellis over there. We do get a plus one because Drew in is a playmaker, and he works on that side. Uh, Right-handed shot. I feel like we need a sniper here. Um, Flip-flop them, and then Ellis instead. Uh, maybe Joel Farabee. Oh, Hayes would actually get us a plus three on the power play, so we're going to do that. We're going to move Hayes up. Could help us out. He's a left-handed shot. He doesn't fit, but as a power forward, I guess he does. Uh, we'll put him in the middle there. Uh, and actually, we'll flip-flop him. Oh, okay. So at center, he he can't play center. He can play only play le any of these middle three spots. Edit the strategies, though. Um, formation preview, thank you. I'm pretty sure we already went through this. Uh, the distributor is going to be Tony D'Angelo. Uh, actually, Jonathan drew in. The finisher being Konechny, I, maybe? And the puck carrier being... Uh, Sean Couturier. Um, maybe Konechny should be... Konechny should probably be our, our distributor uh, with Drew in being our finisher. Because uh, he's got... Konechny's got the tape to tape. So that'll probably um, help us out quite a bit. Um, I know I had D'Angelo last year, but... We're going to go back to edit lines. We'll go to power play line two now. Um, and we've got Ellis at center, which is obviously not a smart idea. But we will flip-flop that. Put Atkinson on the wing. Frost at center. These guys all fit except for Farabee. Uh, is Farabee on the top line? Ter Farabee is not on the top line, but we he doesn't get us a plus. He's not very good there. Provorov and then Ellis. So maybe Provorov out um, and bring in a guy like Owen Tippett. Yeah, I think Owen Tippett on this power play would be good uh, to get a good shot off there. Shoots left. Cam Atkinson also. Yeah, a Atkinson also shoots right. I think Tippett's shot is a bit more dangerous. We'll put Frost in front of the net. Uh, Farabee's got actually hand-to-eye of 87. Frost has hand-to-eye of 89. So, yeah, he's perfect in front of the net there. Atkinson and then Ellis. Uh, perfect. So, the distributor is going to be Ryan Ellis. The finisher is going to be uh, Tippett. And then the, the carrier will be Farabee. I think that's actually uh, pretty solid there. All right. Uh, Four-man power play is not something that I concern myself with. We got Kachurier and Boyd with uh, Provorov versus Alinen. Uh We've got Hayes and Paling with Sandheim and Ellis. And then we got Farabee with Allison, D'Angelo, and York. 
Um, I, we do pay those bottom line guys to do stuff, uh, but apparently it, it doesn't work. Probably because we have two offensive defensemen here, but we just kind of have to. Um, and then here we have Ellis and Sanheim. Uh, I don't know what, why Kevin Hayes. I mean, it's not like he doesn't fit the penalty kill. I don't know why we're getting a minus two. Maybe because it's two way forward and a power forward. Uh, I can't really tell you there, but uh, moving flip flopping Hayes and Boyd. Okay, so the, then penalty kill line one is Couturier and Hayes. That's fine by me. That's a pretty good penalty kill line. Boyd and Paling, uh, and then we get Farabee with Allison. We maybe want a, a face off taker here, somebody that can actually win the face off. Yeah, because Farabee can't. Uh, so Allison out. Can we get a center who wins faceoffs? Um, we're actually using almost all of them, but Frost here. Frost can do a decent job. We'll change in the current line only, um, and then we'll flip flop Frost. Yeah, Frost can play center for us. There we go. So Frost and Farabee on the third penalty killing line, and I think that's fine. So we've set up our special teams, uh, and we're good to go. Uh, we get a trade offer again for Rasmus Ristolainen. I have to decline it. Uh, we have no idea how we did against. Um, against uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning still. So Bobby Brink uh, is now back ready to go, and Paling will go back down with Boyd and Cates. So love it. Love to see it. Uh, Paling can play center, Boyd, and then Cates can only play left wing. So Paling at center, how can you take faceoffs? You take him better than Travis Boyd, technically. Um, and there we go. So Brink with, yeah, okay, we're good to go. Against the Devils, we lose. Paling is fully healed. He's already in there, and then we win. So we did beat the Tampa Bay Lightning, and we are 5-3-1 and one to start the season, and this is what we like to see. Like I said, we're not tearing it down. We're kind of like on-the-fly rebuild, trying to get good players and maintain our wins, right? I know it's great to get Dart or, or, or Tank for some of these amazing players, but I think for us, the best thing we can do is continue to be competitive um, and, and just kind of keep reshuffling the deck, especially with a signing like... Um, Jonathan Drew, I think that helps our top six quite a bit. But Cam Atkinson with nine points in nine games. Kevin Hayes with, oh, uh, he's shooting 14%. That's actually not too bad. Cam Atkinson is a shooter. Holy smokes. The third line loves to shoot. Couturier loves to shoot as well. D'Angelo Ellis. Wow. Is Ellis leading the team in shots? He is. Good for Ryan Ellis, but I'd like to see other guys shoot. Uh, the first line seems to be a big old minus. Uh, I don't like that. Who is actually carrying the team? It is the bottom. Bobby Brink with one goal, seven games. <laughs> uh, but minus five for Farabee, Frost, Couturier. Uh, Jonathan Drewin's a minus three. Ristolainen's a minus three. Yikes. Goaltending-wise, Carter Hart having himself a good season. So I can't really complain. We'll go another month. Um, no, no sense in after nine games trying to make anything definitive. Um, so we'll go here up to December 1st against Anaheim. We are going to win two to one against Vegas. We win four to a five, three loss to McDavid and the Oilers. Uh, oh my God, I, please. I just want to accept those Risto, but I can't. Uh, but there we go. A win against the Devils, a win against the Senators, a win against the Bruins. Well, we lose the, the lightning, get their revenge on us. Um, Noah Cates fractured his collarbone. He's going to be out for a little while. It sounds like, and then we will just quick sub in. Um, I guess Wade Allison. Yeah, we'll just quick sub in Allison and we'll again flip flop these guys around there. So that is that. Um, and we are up. Joel Farabee wants to start a conversation. Um, uh, I right, right, Red. Right now, I don't think I'm performing to the best of my abilities. No, I don't think you are. I don't think you are. Agree. Um, give an opportunity to solve the coach, ugh, persuade. Uh, convincing chance, although you I'm confident in your abilities. I am confident in your abilities, Joel. Um, and what's he going to say? Maybe you're right, but I'm not certain. It was a convincing chance. Oh, no. And now he's going to have minus 15 management morale. He's not going to be happy. He lost three overall morale, and he's in 85 still. There we go. We beat the Rangers, and we lose in a shootout to the Penguins. But we're still in a playoff spot here with 27 points, still looking okay. Uh, we beat the Sabres. We lost in the shootout every Thursday, it seems like. Um, and right now, it's it's going okay, right? We're not flying out the gates, but Cam Atkinson is. Holy smokes, Cam Atkinson is absolutely killing it here on this line. I, I don't know if I should move um, Farabee out of that top line spot. Get the plus three. Joel Farabee on the second line, who he just doesn't fit. We can move Farabee down, maybe, and, and bring somebody else up, but... Uh, maybe get the plus three on this top line there. They need a little bit of help connect. Yeah, this this second line's not working like I hoped it would. The third line is working very well, though. Um, Cam Atkinson is pouring in goals and Bobby Brink is just enjoying his time out there. 
eight points in 21 games. Five goals. You know, honestly, I can't really be upset with this. Only 11 minutes per night. Good takeaway to giveaway ratio. I'm not upset by that for a, a young rookie at 22. Defensively, uh, looks fine to me. The middle pairing is the better pairing. Ryan Ellis maybe over Tony D'Angelo. Uh, we get a minus one there if I did that. Um, and I don't think I want to do anything else. Maybe moving Sandheim down. Now, Sandheim's playing well. Cam York's not. I can't really uh, envision myself doing that. Uh, Provorov's a lefty, so we could. I mean, we could do this. P play Ryan Ellis on the top line. I think he's he's a, he's a lot better defensively than Tony D'Angelo. He is a lot better, and I think the plus three here with Konechny, Kachurier, Drew in. Farabee playing with Frost and Tippett is fine, and then Atkinson, Hayes, and Brink. That third line seems to be just absolutely doing well. In goal, Carter Hart, 9-12, 272, 11 wins out of 20 games. Maybe it's time to talk to him about a contract extension uh, because he is expiring. We do have the dollars for it. Um, I think maybe Tony D'Angelo is somebody that we could wait and see how we're doing at the deadline, right? He's got 13 points in 23 games. He's playing well. He's a phenomenal offensive defenseman, right? But he's not doing well for us uh, defensively in either season. I mean, 51 points is great. But um, I would, I, I might want to also look for a defensive defenseman to pair alongside him, maybe on that second pairing. But I can't, I just can't move Risto. Tippett needs a contract extension. He's the kind of guy that I think I would like to extend. Uh, he put up 45 points this year, last year. Uh, not really on pace for that this year. His shooting percentage is pretty poor. He has 70 shots, though, through 23 games. That's what I like to see. Um, he's kind of underperforming, so we'll see if what it would take to bring him back. Uh, I'll give him a one-year prove-it deal at the 2.825. I, I like that a lot. Uh, one more year. Walks him to a UFA. Right, We'll see what he gets to. Uh, I think we're good there with the two and a half million. And then Carter Hart, what does he want? He wants, okay, so we can give him, a, I think, a four-year extension. He'd be a UFA at the end of it. It doesn't really matter. Seven years, we could get 10 million. I don't want to spend 10 million on a goalie. I'll give him four years at eight and a half. I'm okay with that. Um, maybe three, you know what? Three years at seven and a half. Three years at seven and a half is ha would make me happy. Hopefully, it makes Carter Hart happy. Um, because I'm happy with his performance this year. And I'm, I think three years, seven and a half million, get him to 28, see where he's at, right? Reassess, offer him that extension. We should be good to go there. Those are the extensions I'm going to make. Tony D'Angelo might be somebody that I think at the deadline we could get something really, really good for if things are looking grim, right? If we're looking on the outside in right now, uh, we're barely above the Hurricanes. We are three points above the Rangers and, and we are a point above the Panthers. Uh, so the wild card's not really a concern, but maybe D'Angelo is just a glorified second line offensive defenseman and I've been using him uh, incorrectly. But here we go. Last month of simulation before we really make any definitive uh, decisions. Oh, and Tippett's going to extend his contract and Carter Hart is going to extend his contract and we get back-to-back -back wins. Uh, we pick, pick up three points against the Colorado Avalanche. Konechny has a sore shoulder. He's expected to return December 22nd. Uh, move Farabee up there. Move Atkinson up there. Move Paling up there. And then we're going to throw in uh, McEwen. Cates is still out as well, which is a bit unfortunate. But on the power play, we do lose out on... Uh, we'll move Tippett up to the first line power play. And then the second line power play... Um, you know, why don't we give Bobby Brink some power play time? Bobby Brink, a sniper. Give him some power play time. Uh, he is a right-handed shot there as well. Edit the strategies. Finisher is Atkinson. That's fine. All right, great. And then I think penalty kill, we might have some issues. Um, okay, edit the lines instead. Penalty kill. Nope, we don't have any issues there. Extra lines. Do we have any issues there? No, it looks like we are okay. So there we go. It's Drew in with Couturier. Actually, let me move Owen Tippett to the top line. I, I just like Owen Tippett. Actually, Cam Atkinson has earned it. Cam Atkinson has earned a chance at the top line uh, with his play this season so far. Uh, 22 points in 28 games. He is slowing down a bit, but he has been playing well. So uh, we win 3-2. Paling pulls his groin, is out until December 24th. So we are starting to get hit a little bit by an injury bug here. Um, I can't justify... Um, Oli Olivi will go to roster moves. Uh, yeah, having invalid lines can mean changes are lost. That's okay. In the system, how is Lehman doing? That's one thing I want to check out. He's only got nine points and is a minus 19. Oh my goodness. That's not what you want to see. Ratcliffe will, will call up Delorier just because he's, you know, he's whatever down there. He's not really worthwhile. Halton in. How is he doing? Halton is injured. He's got six points. Yikes. He might be dragging down that top line. We may want to move him off the top line and move Ronning there. 
Uh, we're going to edit the lines in the NHL, though. Uh, we're going to just move uh, Nicholas Delorier, substitute there, flip-flop him with Boyd, because they, uh, can we play, do we have a center here, Delorier? I feel like you can take face-offs. No, but uh, Zach McEwen can. Tyler Boyd, Ty Tyler Boyd, Travis Boyd can play there, that's fine. Um, other places is the penalty kill. Penalty kill line two has an issue. Boyd can take face-offs. Um, we'll put in Delorier. Sure, substitute him in there. That's fine. And we'll take a look at the AHL because this is clearly not working um, the way I had hoped. We'll just go head coach preferred lines. Um, and now it's Ratcliffe with Lehman Hul and Casper Halton in. Um, why don't we put uh, Ronning up there on the top line and we'll move Halton into the second line with Brooks and Cates. Two-way, two-way with a sniper. Hopefully we can start that get that line going is a minus 19 here from a guy that's really a lot better than <laughs> what it says as a 77 I think he should be doing a lot better I think it might just be um a lack of of Halton and doing well can we get an offensive defenseman maybe not a defensive defenseman going there Andre there we go oh what about Adder and Andre I feel like that's a fine pairing a lefty with a righty uh Wiley playing with Zamula and then Sealer playing with Connaughton uh, let's, let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. I'm going to leave that like that. Um, but I don't like the way the AHL is looking at all. Um, I thought for sure we'd have a top, whoa, a top, top offensive, uh, first line. Um, but okay, here we go. We are good to go now. Everybody's should be getting, uh, healthy soon here around the 22nd. Um, I'm not going to play him if he's ready to go. Um, oh, we do need to send somebody down though. That's fine. We call up Nicholas Delorier for a game. It was nice to see you, buddy. Um, he is waiver eligible, but if anybody claims him, more power to you. Edit the NHL lines. Bring Paling back. Uh, quick substitution. Bring in Paling. There we go. Uh, take McEwen out. We're going to bring in Cates. Um, and then, uh, actually, I think we'll take Allison out and bring in Konechny. There we go. So, Boyd with Konechny. Konechny with... Atkinson and there we go so I think we had the plus three on the first line again um and then Atkinson how are you doing uh hey he hasn't scored a point since we put him on that first line that's not a great sign at all but Joel Farabee I do like the plus one plus one minus four good lord uh maybe Atkinson on this second line and then move like that and then have connect me with Kachirier and Drew in I don't know how we're doing what we're doing but we're doing it um Paling takes face-offs. Cates plays left wing. Boyd plays right wing. Brink with Hayes and Tippett. Uh, I think that's probably the best spot for Tippett. I, I tried to get him up on that second line, but maybe maybe I want a guy like Hayes on the second line. Uh, and, and we'll just kind of go by overall now because Hayes and... Uh, they've been playing well. Uh, Frost and Tippett have been awful together. So we are going to stop the sim. We win 4-1 there. All right. Good to see that. I believe we should be... Uh, getting somebody back soon. Cates is fully healthy. Uh, Paling's fully healthy. Um, and we are good to go um, there. All right, so let's get to the end of the month. Just three games to go. Against Florida, we win 2-1. to one. Tony D'Angelo pulls his groin. And now we have to edit the lines manually. That's really upsetting because I think he was doing pretty well. But we are going to play York and Sandheim together. I'm not moving Risto up. And Ole Yolevi gets to step in and really does not fit because he's a two-way defenseman with... A EA, you want to explain to me why he fits perfectly, he fits half, and they're both two-way defensemen. One's a left-handed D, one's a right-handed D. Why does why does Ole Uolabi not work? I don't know why he wouldn't work. Did, is, is chemistry glitched or something? Because, like, how is two two-way defensemen that fit, how is that a minus? Ole Uolabi is a defense, right? I'm not... <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, why that wouldn't be a, a thing, but... Atkinson, Drew in, Kachuri. I think it goes one, two, three, four, five down here. Um, so we'll put. Oh my! Oh my! E EA, what is what is happening right now? Oh my god! Uh, all right, we're gonna leave Ellis in the shootout because why not? Goaltending wise, Carter Hart is starting to decline as far as statistics are concerned, and we lose to the least. We did slaughter the Montreal Canadiens, and oh my god! With one, was that one loss? And all of a sudden, we're down in fourth place well, I guess it's because we other teams had games in hand on us and now Kachirie is our number one point getter all right so at the 31st how is this team doing 
uh, at the new year, I should say. 61 point percentage is not bad. 308, 4, 294 against. That's pretty solid. The power play is at 20%. I love that. And the penalty kill is at 85%. So you'd like to see a little bit higher considering the rest of the division is insane on the penalty kill. Um, you know, but we're fourth, right? That's where we expect to be. But as far as points are concerned, Couturier, Drew in, Atkinson has started to find some points again. Hayes, Farabee, there's D'Angelo. We'll stick with just forwards, but um, Atkinson is doing great. Hayes is doing great. They're a minus two now. Farabee's a minus 13. Yikes. Not what I like to see. I guess, I guess just our coach, maybe, maybe it is our coach. Maybe I, I mean, but I can't justify firing a coach um, that's doing this well with a team that like this, but Bobby Brink having a good season, a plus six. Who would have thought that this guy would be this good? Uh, and his underlying numbers look fantastic. You know, 81 defensive awareness, 85 passing, 85 offensive awareness on a really solid shot. Good skater as well. I'm excited to see the future of Bobby Brink. Owen Tippett though. I mean, I like him. Game a one-year prove-it deal because I liked how he started the season and he's really, really cooled off. But Paling, Boyd, the bottom six, the bottom six has got something working. With the bottom six, like Boyd has been a good acquisition. Paling was a good waiver claim, it looks like. Um, but defensively, Tony D'Angelo had 23 and 35. Provorov with 21 and 36. Ellis now with 19 and 36. And he is a plus, which is massive because he's the only plus defenseman we have. Sanheim, York, and then Yoel Levy's got a point in last game, but he was a minus as well. And goaltending-wise... Um, it's not, not, not very impressive. It's not very impressive. If you ask me, um, let's take a look at the AHL though. Ronning now is a plus six with 25 points. Brooks, um, Lehman oh, minus 21. I'm pretty sure he was a minus 19 halt. These guys are absolute. This, this might blow up in my face, giving these guys a contract and trying to, to sign them. Um, cause they are, they're absolutely floundering in the AHL. I mean, absolutely floundering. I don't know if it's just the lights are too bright or something like that, but take a look at the progress report. See how Lehman and, and Halton are doing. Uh, modified Zach McEwen, negative statistical growth. That's fine. Travis Boyd, positive statistical growth. Things we love to see. Owen Tippett, uh, positive statistical growth. But let's take a look at the potential. Carter Hart's not growing. Couturier, Faraby, Tippett, and Frost. Frost, are you growing naturally? No, it also. Ooh, one face off growth. Love to see it. Um, let's take a look in the, in the system though. The guys that we really care about. Haltonen has three pl a plus to offensive awareness, a plus to defensive awareness and a plus to durability. Okay. Uh, rat. That's not Ratcliffe. That's, that's not rat. Ratcliffe does not have X factors like that. That is, that is Haltonen's. Oh, everybody now has Haltonen's X factors. It, once I scroll through here, um, I don't know what the hell's happening, but Lehman is not growing at all. Tyson Forster um, is growing a little bit. Discipline. Uh, he's happy, so he's going up a little bit. Uh, that's it, though. Uh, and then Ratcliffe. Ratcliffe is actually growing nicely. Uh, he's got shot blocking, stick checking, aggressiveness, body checking, and strength. Now off the charts at 6'6". Six, six. I mean, good player here with medium top six. Could be somebody worth keeping an eye out for. Delorier is probably uh, statistical growth down through the gutter. But not a lot of growth from the players we need to grow. So would like to see him put up some points. But I guess the two-way forward sniper combination is not a good one. Um, and I have no idea why Ole Olivi is causing a negative two uh, on this bottom pairing. There's literally nothing in my mind. Oh, no, it's not a minus two. What? Ah, uh, okay. Um, That should be a plus one, though. Unless it was uh, with Frost. Maybe I want to do that. Keep Hayes on the third line. He was a plus until he came to this second line. Uh, and then have Faraby with Couturier and Drew in, getting the plus one. So it's 85, 89, 86, uh, 85, 83, 85. Uh, and then, you know, it it is how it is there on the bottom. But again, I have that that just kind of um two guys that fit here. Um oh Cam York doesn't fit there. Does Yo Levy fit the middle pairing as well? Uh, I guess not. Sanheim, Cam York. Up there with Ellis. No, that doesn't make any sense. We'll we'll leave it like this. Um, but again, the, that was confusing why Ole Olivi would be a minus two. Um, but realistically, guys, we are on the cusp. We are a fringe team again. We need to find a way to get over that hump, to get over that hurdle. Um, and it really is Lehman and Haltonen taking that next step here. Um, I don't know. Why are they playing with the Laurier? I, why? Connor Marodi, Wisdom. Ugh, I had Ronning up there. Um, like that, uh, maybe that's partially why Ronning is killing it. 
Um, okay, yeah, I think we're gonna do this. I think we're gonna put Halton in on the second line. We got two A, two A sniper. Do we have a playmaker? Case is a playmaker. Uh, can we get a playmaker to work up here? Um, I, I'd like to keep Ratcliffe up there. Um, I kind of would like to keep these guys together, but clearly we saw it just didn't work. I don't know if Halton is just not good enough yet. Um, with his underlying numbers, his defense is pretty horrific. Um, all things considered, um, uh, no, no pluses there. Delorier, come on down here for wisdom. All right. And then defensively, it's just take your pick. <laughs> Andre though, I'd like to play over Connaughton. Connaughton over Zamula. Uh, Zamula over Wiley. And there we go. All right. And then obviously in goal, we still have Felix Sandstrom, who's having an okay season. Yikes. So uh, everything's just a little bit weird right now. Everything's a little bit off. Uh, I, oh, you know what? I need, you know what I did? I do need to turn, I have that on. I think I have the head coach edits AHL lines on. Um, or is that in the other, yeah, minor league head coach? No. Okay, so there we go. No minor league head coach. I'm going to do it myself. I set it up to do that. I got to make sure they're on the power play too. I didn't actually make sure that was the case, but I'll go ahead and do this in just a second, guys. You let me know your thoughts. I I, I really do um, want to know where I should go. Should I look to make a trade for a defensive defenseman? Um, taking a look at the, the trade block could be an interesting, um, interesting dynamic here, right? Um, oh, that's not our block. It's browse trade blocks. There we go. Um, browse trading block. All right. So is anybody offering a defensive defenseman? Um, no, it looks like Zemgus Gergensen's could be an option. Not really. Uh, grinder. Nope. No, nobody there. Derek Forbort could be a guy to go after. Hag Mayfield. Mayfield's got two years left on his deal. Forbort's got one year left on his deal. He would fit on our third defensive pairing. That could be an option. Um, what about uh, Scott Mayfield they have on the block? He does not fit our coach's scheme. So Sabres just want to give up picks. Um... Offensive defenseman there, but nobody, nobody overall wise. Nedeljkovic is on the block. Okay, interesting. Uh, Ryan Suzuki um, in the minors, good playmaker, but would fit on our whose first line, um, our first line in the a NHL, but could be an interesting uh, guy to go after potentially. Um, I'll browse the trade block, maybe come up with a guy that I can propose to you guys um, in another episode. But I think we do need a defensive defenseman because we just have so many offensive defensemen. Um, Ben Sherratt, he's got three years left at 5.2, not a contract I'm looking to acquire at all. Neither is Jensen. Um, but I will go ahead and find something for you guys. We got the trade deadline coming up in the next one. They're cleaning house here in Florida. Holy smokes. Sergei Bobrovsky, Anthony Duclair could be the kind of sniper that we need. Um, he would fit all the fourth power, uh, fourth line in the power play. Maybe not what we need. Um, but we need a defensive defenseman. We have got two offensive defensemen, no defensive defensemen. I think it is something we should look to acquire. Um, uh, maybe just scratch Risto. I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I think that's all the time I have for this one, guys. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see some more. And I will see you guys in the next one. This is a free for all. Free for all. What we fall. This is a free for all.